Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and in this video I am going to show you the report that we have on the screen. So the requirement of the user is that if there is a selection made over a calendar year number in on the slicer. So what we want to see is the January and February of the previous month and the current month of the current year. So if I make a selection over 2008, you can see that we are able to see January and February of 2007 and March of 2008 and similarly for 2007 but in this in this data model we do not have any sales prior to 2007 that's why we do not see january and february and for 2007 we do not see the data for the month of march because there was no sales after 2009 so in order to create this report what we need is we need to create a duplicacy of the dates table and what i have done is i created a duplicate date table in my model and i have named it as disk date or maybe shorthand for disconnected dates table so the issue that we are facing is so I have already shown you the first report and in the second page of report if I make any selection over the slicer you can see that we are only able to see the current month of the current year that we have selected in the slicer. So why do we see the only the current month and not the January and February of the previous year. So the answer lies between the queries that are being generated by this visual and for that let's go to the view tab and hit performance analyzer and start recording. So if I click on refresh visual and select the copy and copy the query from the uh, performance analyzer and go to DAX studio. So let's wait for it to open and let's copy the code and let's keep the code that we are interested in and let's remove everything else. So let me just write evaluate and then I'm going to return this second variable. So the reason why we do not see the correct numbers in the report is that summarize column starts so first of all we have a variable in, named as ds zero filter table which is basically the tree test 2009 from dates calendar year number which has been derived from the slicer then we have another variable which is summarize columns over dates calendar year number and dates month and dates number and then there are roll up groups and roll up add is subtotal so what happens is that summarize column is trying to group by these three columns that we have but the filter that the, the selection of the slicer that we have made this filter actually filters these columns as well so before our measure kicks in the axis of that visual is already filtered that's why we are not able to see the amount or you can say the months of the previous year so if you run this visual you can see that only march is visible for 2009 that's why we need a disconnected dates table that doesn't have any data lineage with the existing tables in the model which we can use to then filter from the, from the slicer and then in that scenario our code will start working. So let me just show you the performance analyzer for that visual as well. See if I clear everything and make a slice, slice selection over 2009. Let's refresh and I'm going to copy the query. So let's remove everything that is not useful and write evaluate evaluate and return the second variable and if i click on run you can see that now we are able to see all the months or you can say january and february of the previous year and the current month of the current year that we have selected in the slicer so the the reason why we are able to get result with the disconnected dates table is that this table is not able to filter the axis of our visual so the columns of the summarize that are being used for the grouping do not have any data lineage with that disconnected dates table that's why disconnected dates table cannot filter these columns that are used for grouping and that's why our measure is able to work on the correct axis on and with correct months in the visual so let's head over to the Power BI and then I'm going to show you how we can create a measure like that and then return the the January and February of the previous year and the current month of the current year. Now I'm back in Power BI. So let's start building our report. And for that, let's create a matrix on which I'm going to drag my dates hierarchy. And I'm going to create a slicer on which I need to drag my calendar year number from the disconnected dates table. And then I can choose the option of list and let's increase the font size a little bit so that it is visible on the screen 
and from the performance oh sorry i need to close performance analyzer and from the slicer i'm going to limit the number of options or the number of the years that we have in the slicer and i'm going to select basic filtering let's select 2007 8 9 and 10 and then i can increase the font size of my matrix as well so let's create a new measure and let's right click new measure and i'm going to zoom in and zoom in a little bit and i can name it as previous year and current year sales and first of all we need to create a new variable that will retrieve the maximum year from the filter context and i'm going to name it as max year equal to max disconnected calendar year number this is the same calendar year number that i have in the slicer so if i select something in the slicer the max is going to return the max from that slicer and let's return the max year for for a minute so that we can see everything we are doing in the visual and click on confirm and i'm going to drag that measure in the report so as for now it is it says 2011 but if i make a selection on the slicer you can see that the max year is 2010 and for 2008 it is 2008 now we need to create another variable which will be previous year so what we are going to do is if user has selected 2010 in the slicer we need to get the immediate next previous year from the dates table that we have and for that we need to write calculate max dates calendar year number and then we are going to write dates calendar year number is less than the max year that we have selected from the slicer so if i return the previous year you can see that if i select 2008 i get 2007 if i select 2010 i get 2009 and so on for each year so far so good so the next variable that we need to create is for the current month of the current year and i'm going to name it as current year sorry current month and it would be simply a month over today it is up to you how you want to calculate the current month but i'm going to use the month today i could have also written the number three as well and if i return current month so let's see what we get we get three as the number for each value for each row of that visual now we need to create a variable that will calculate the previous years january and february so i'm going to name it as prev previous year jan and feb so the code for previous year jan and feb is calculate table so we are going to retrieve a list of values that we are at the end going to push into the filter context and i'm going to use values dates calendar year month number so in my dates table i have a field or a column where i have both month and the calendar year number in the same column so instead of having up applying two filters over two different columns i'm using a single column to apply a single filter and now we need to write dates month in january january if i can only write it correctly and then february you can also use something like dates month number in one and two that's up to you how you want to go with it but i think having january and february as the text makes uh, improves the readability of the code so now the next thing that we need to do is calculate the january and february of the previous year and for that we need to write dates calendar year number equal to the previous year so if you remember the previous year variable basically calculates the immediate previous year that we have after the user makes any sele uh, selection on the slicer and based on that we are going to calculate the january and february of the previous year so if user, sele user selects 2010 then we will get the january and february of 2009 and now let's close the calculate table so it will uh, the calculate table will return a list of uh, values which will be two months 
and let's, let's try to return the values so I can use concatenate x prev year and jan feb and then I can return my dates calendar year month number and as a delimiter I'm going to use comma and a space so you can see that if I select 2009 I get the January of 2008 and the February of 2008 and similarly for other month other years as well so let's move ahead and what I need to do is create the variable for the this year current month so I'm going to write this year current month and that is simply another calculate table and again I'm going to use the dates calendar year month field calendar year month number and it, the dates month number I'm going to apply a filter over the dates month number which we have already retrieved from the current month current month variable and we also need to make sure that we are getting the current month of the current year so it is simply dates calendar year number equal to the max year so let's see what this variable is going to return so if I confirm the measure you can see we get March of 2010 in 2009 we get March of 2009 so hopefully by now you can see how having multiple variables in your code improves the readability and then you can also use them to debug your code the second last step that we need to do is create another variable that will be a one single list of both previous year Jan Feb and this year current month and let's create another variable and I'm going to name it as one list and it will be simply a union of both the variables so if I write union previous year Jan Feb and this year current month and let's see what this variable is going to return so let's confirm the measure and you can see that if I select 2009 I get January and February of 2008 as well as March of 2009 and similarly for other years as well so the final step is basically to return the sales amount using this one list and I'm going to create another variable which would be result and it would be simply calculate over total sales and since we have already uh, created a list comprising of two months or oh, sorry three months what we can do is use that table to inject filter into the filter context and in that filter context we are going to evaluate our total sales so I just need to write one list in the filter argument of calculate and now all we need to do is return the result so if I write in result in instead of concatenate x and click confirm you can see that we have received uh, sales amount for 2007 January and February and for March 2008 let's format this the, the value that is being returned by the measure and let's confirm if everything is working or not so if I select 2009 you can see we get January and February for 2008 as well as March for 2009 and for 2010 we get only January and February for 2009 because we do not have any data in this data model after 2009 and similarly for 2007 we do not get 2006 is January and February so that was all for this video and in the next video I'm going to show you how we can optimize this measure because internally this is going to execute a lot of queries and we will see how we can try to reduce the number of queries that are being executed against storage engine all right people I will see you in the next video where we try to optimize this code and if you have any questions for me just let me know in the comment section and I will try my level best to answer your queries and until then have a great day and I will see you in the next video.